Well, hello. Welcome to another episode of What Nobody Told Me After 65. Well, it's the lady on the go, the lady in the know, Miss Simpo. Welcome to the Information Nation, where knowledge is shared and wisdom exchanged for the betterment of a people. I want to talk to you today about Nail salons. Yeah. The Asian nail salons. In the 1980s, 125,000 Vietnamese refugees had settled in the U.S. Word spread rather quickly that the close, throughout the close-knit community that nail salons were a viable uh, business and they could earn a stable income and become self-sufficient. Now, Asian owned salons. And when I say Asian, that's a region that's made up of 48 countries. Okay. And I'm going to give you a few of them. So we'll know what we're talking about. Japan, China, uh, Vietnam, South Korea, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Cambodia, the Philippines, Thailand. Sound familiar? The Asian region is made up of the Far East, Southeast Asia, and the Indian subcontinent. Now, you might have to get your globe or go online and look at the map so you know what area I'm talking about. You know, nothing infuriates me more than stupidity. And there's no reason for us to be stupid with all the technology that's available. So these folks, even though, you know, we call them chings or, you know, all them derogatory things, they're about making that money. They don't care what you call them. Just don't call them late to pick up their check. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Now, typically, you find women uh, in this industry. But lately, I've been seeing men. Men are a little too rough for me. Um, Yes, I do get my nails done. Um, And the men are rough. I like the women better. But anyway, these are women who have migrated from any one of these countries. However, Korea, Koreans own the biggest share of the market. 70 to 80% of the salons in New York are owned by Koreans. Now, here's something I didn't know. There is an internal socio-ethnic hierarchy in the state's nail salon industry, in New York's nail salon industry, but I'm sure it's prevalent all over the U.S. because here here's how they feel. Korean workers are often paid more and can find jobs in the more expensive and lucrative markets like upstate New York or someplace High Park or wherever you know they're paying good money and people make good money that's where they want to work at however some Korean owners have been very vocal about low their low opinion of non-Koreans Mm-hmm. In 2012, Latina and Chinese workers sued the Korean nail salon, Bobby Nails, Baby Nails, because they were being paid $3 a day in pay. They suffered from abuse and overt racism from the Korean owner. They won $400,000 in damages, but have yet to collect on it. 
The owner says he doesn't have the money. Ha! He's a liar. He got the money. Back then, nails were about $10 for a full set. And pedicures were 10 so about 20 bucks. But they was raking it in. You'd see them ushering them folks in. As um, soon as you hit the door. Can I help you? Can I help you? Yeah, you can help me lower these prices. But that wasn't happening. And now, you can't get out of there without dropping $100. That's right. Because you're going to tip them. So 90 bucks for your te uh, nails and your feet. And a $10 tip, it's $100. Hmm. I was shocked to learn of the hierarchical disparity among the Asians. Now, we know it exists between Mexicans and Puerto Ricans, and we also knew it existed between Jamaicans and Africans. Boy, a Jamaican hates to be uh, mis misguided, I mean, misunderstood and called an African and vice versa. I don't think it's that they don't like each other, but I mean, they each are distinct. But when we hear that, that language, you know, it depends on which uh, country comes to mind. <clears throat> Nine times out of ten, we pick the wrong one. But anyway, the fact that they speak in their own language in front of us infuriates us ticks me off. I used to say, you in America speak English. What's wrong with you? But guess what? A lot of them don't know how to speak English. No. It is, think of it this way. They've lost everything. They left their homes you know, everything that they've known, maybe their country was in a uh, civil war, you know, some craziness been going on over in these, um, quote unquote, third world countries, and um, they're escaping, okay? So they get here, and their girlfriend, their neighbor, somebody at their church tells them about the nail salon industry, or they hear about it before they get here. And somebody's training them. And you probably got to pay them to train you. Okay? So you're in a hurry trying to make this money back so that you can survive. So you can have a, a place to stay. Because you know what they're doing. they put them in one-bedroom apartments 90 at a time. And now you're in a hurry to get out on the floor to get into the salon so you can make some money. So they've trained you real quick and thrown you in there. And all you know is your language and how to do them nails. And that's all you do all day long, perhaps seven days a week. Yeah, it is close to slave labor. So that's the one thing that they can call their own, their language. And they speak it with intensity. Sounds like they're talking about you. Well, they're not talking about you, but they could be talking about you. Do we know? No. I've read some stories where people have actually known the Mandarin, because Chinese is Mandarin. They've known the language. Either they were in the military or had a reason to learn it. And they've been able to pull them up. I know what you're saying. Another thing about them, they don't make eye contact. When we're talking, I expect you to look at me because I know you're talking to me. But they don't have to do that. So I'm looking around. Who in the world is this person having a conversation with? Who is she or he talking to? Looks like they're looking at their shoes. They steady doing your nails, but they just, I don't give it up, whatever it is. That's off putting to Americans. Would it bother me if the shoe was on the other foot, if I was in their country? 
and I was speaking to the people around me in a language that was foreign to them. I don't know. I had to put my feet in their shoes. But I can tell you this. If you're going to take my money, I'd like for you to take my money in English. Thank you, since we're dealing in dollars. But of course, that's my opinion. So, they continue to speak in their native language. Uh, no, and it makes us uncomfortable. However, it's all, it's the only thing that they have left. That's all they have to themselves anymore. But don't feel sorry for their plight. Don't feel sorry. Like most women with children to raise, they have come up with a financial solution. They invest in a rotating credit association. It's called a key. Um, Jamaican women do it. Now I'm finding Asian women do it. It is a collective. And you all put into this pot. And you rotate who gets the entire pot. Depending on how many people are involved and how much the pot is. You could be picking up a couple thousand dollars if it's weekly, monthly, semi-monthly. I don't know. They're a little more close-knit on their information, but it works just like the ones that the Jamaicans uh, the, and the, um, who are, the Africans, because they do it too. Again, you, it's called by a lot of different names, I'm sure, and um, I, I'm 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 gonna look more into it because it's spelled K E Y E S. If anybody knows anything about it, comment. And let's have a little conversation. So anyway, so beyond the discriminatory discriminatory issues, let's look at the health issues both for them and on a smaller scale for us. There are ingredients in nail products that are known to cause cancer and cause reproductive issues. Debutyl phentate, tulene, and formaldehyde. These are called the toxic trio. Three of the most common um, carcinogenics known, however, there's not enough data on the long-term effects of exposure to the chemicals and fumes. The nail industry, they've been around more than 10 years, so the only thing I can say is nobody's watching, nobody's paying attention. OSHA has not updated their policies since 1970. More specifically, their permissible exposure limits. There's very little regulation, and many workers cannot afford to leave to improve their health. While the European Union, the EU, has banned 1,300 chemicals from being used in cosmetics. The U.S., they've banned less than 12. What does that tell you? I'll tell you what it tells you. This is an $8 billion industry sitting there quiet and growing like a beast. $8 billion, but it's very quiet relatively unregulated, but over across the pond, it's even worse. They have Vietnamese women being trafficked. They brought them in to do work in the nail salons. In 2019, 39 smuggled migrants froze or suffocated to death all with dreams of working in the nail salon industry. That's just sad. 
And I'm sure there's more, but it's so unregulated and quiet. A lot of these people don't have um, visas. They paid somebody to bring them in, and they're just here under the radar, doing their thing, making money. There are about 53,000 nail salons in the U.S. At least 34% of the workers have been in the business for at least 10 years. That's what I said, 10 years. Not surprisingly, the 55 and older age group represent 25% of the consumed services. But number one, the number one consumer is the 35 to 44 age group. They represent 27%. The average wages on an annual basis for the worker at the nail salon is $25,860 in the U.S., that works out to about $500 a week, and that's without tips. And mind you, tips, they get pretty good. When I tell you that when I go, you know, I leave a $10 at least, $5 for the person who did my hands and $5 for the person that did my feet. So what I'm saying to you is the next time you're in a nail shop, relax. They are not talking about you. They really are the hardest working people in their industry, really. They like the James Brown of nail salons. They said he was the hardest working man in entertainment. So treat them right. Tip them if you can. Something. You know what I mean? They got families to raise too. Remember to subscribe, like, share, hit the notification bell. I'm getting a little later and later because I, I got people coming in now. It's getting warm here. Family members coming in and I'm entertaining. I think I'm going to do uh, a couple of pre-recorded videos um, and schedule them to be loaded. That's going to save me time. It takes away for me the authenticity. I, I like this, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, what, what, Got on my nerves throughout the day. By the way, I had a tire blowout. And um, thank God I wasn't driving. I mean, it, it blew, but it didn't blow out while I was driving. And, um, and I found out that if you buy one tire, you got to buy two. It set me back a few hundred dollars today that I wasn't expecting. So I was late because that just took my mind away from it. Also, don't forget, if you want to be a member of the GEMS, that's the private membership. Um, I only got two levels, Emerald and Sapphire. Check it out. Let me know if you want to be a member. Not a big deal. Appreciate it. Appreciate you, Daisy. Thank you for supporting me, dear. Um, T-shirts, yeah, they're coming. I can't even keep talking to you about it, but they are coming. And um, I am, I have an Instagram and the Facebook, okay, which is Information Nation. Actually, the logo that's being used on the Facebook Information Nation, that is what I'm going to use for t-shirts because it's nice and simple. If you put it on a black background, a blue background, purple, white, it, it'll, it'll roll. So, um, it looks like it's the tree, it looks like a tree of life, knowledge, the tree of knowledge, really, with um, a sunrise behind it. So, check it out. Tell me what you think. I might put a poll up. It's too late for you to change it, because I already paid for that one. Uh, however, when we get the t-shirts, you can get any color you want. I think it's going to look very nice on it. Now where we put the actual words information nation and then underneath of it, uh, you don't know what you don't know. Um, we could put that on the back. I think I will put a poll up. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this segment today. And remember, you don't know what you don't know. Till we meet again.